What's up guys, my name is Casey. This is my 2001 Toyota 4Runner and in today's video, we're gonna be doing a great walk around. I started driving this car in 2015 when it had only 180,000 miles on it. Now it has almost 300,000 miles on the original 5BZ FE engine. And with that said, let's hop into the video. All right, so probably the most often question I get asked about on this vehicle is about these headlights. I built these headlights about two years ago. I used Mini D2S 5.0 projectors. These are the Panamera 2.0 shrouds in black, and they also have a halo on the outside. These are just the switchback models, so they don't change colors or anything. I have them wired to my DRLs so they're always in the amber position, although you can run them switchbacks so they normally stay white and they would change colors with your turn signal. And these things are crazy bright. These are significantly brighter than the stock headlights. They have a super sharp and clean cutoff line so they're not going to blind any oncoming drivers. And nowadays they actually have LED projectors. These projectors are actually HID and when you turn them on they actually have about a 20 second warm up time versus the latest projectors by companies like BX Well, They use LED projectors which are instant on so you don't have to worry about those annoying warm up times. And they also have matching corner lights to go on the sides. The corner lights I have here are just the stock ones. I just spray painted over them a bit. BX Build does make custom corner lights. Also, you probably saw these turn signal filler panels underneath. I got these from SRQ Fabrications. It's just a row of LEDs and they also do paint match. They can do any color filler panels that you want, but these things are awesome, especially for you guys that are running aftermarket bumpers like this that get rid of the stock turn signal location. These things have worked amazingly. For the front bumper, I am running a steel bumper from Addicted Off-Road. I got this about three years ago now, and it's just spray painted with bed liner, so nothing fancy. As you can see, there's quite a few chips in it. I'll have to redo that eventually. To mount this bumper, you are going to have to cut off the frame rail end caps, as with most aftermarket bumpers on the market. But other than that, it's pretty much bolt-on, and it comes with the bolt-on cross member, which is super strong. For the winch, I am running a Smittybilt XRC 9,500-pound winch. So far, this thing has been great. It's pulled out one-ton pickup trucks, it's done long pulls and it's worked great so far. I haven't had the most opportunities to use it. I am just running a steel cable. I don't have a synthetic rope, although I kind of wish I did because after some of my uses, I left it in kind of a kinked position a few times and I noticed that there's some kinks in the steel cable that I have. The D-rings down here, I just got on Amazon. In regards to aftermarket lighting, I am running two sets of diode dynamics pods. This set on the outside, is a driving beam pattern. It's a pretty narrow focus beam and also both of these pods are SAE compliant, meaning that they're street legal. The driving beam pattern is street legal for high beam usage and the fog pattern is street legal for fog beam usage. My fog beam is actually a SS3 Max, which is their top of the line pod. And this thing is crazy bright. I have had no complaints with it. And the SS3 Pro I have here, that is the driving beam pattern and that has also been crazy, right? It costs about half as much as the SS3 Max that I have. Now, a lot of people ask me about what I did to my fender flares. This is the stock SR5 fender flares on a 2001 Toyota 4Runner. And I actually cut these up by about two inches. There's a natural body line that runs right about here on the fender that I cut along. I just use my angle grinders, not as clean as it looks as it might look in pictures. And same thing on the inside. I cut this up by about two or three inches. And on the inside, I drill holes and attach the inner fender liner to it. And also when I was running 35s, I did do a tub on the inside to clear those tires. I just installed these new 37 inch KM3s and I'm gonna have to do a bit more tubbing on that to get these to fit. For wheels, I just put on these Falcon Off-Road T7s. They're 17 by nine, minus 12 millimeter in matte bronze. And I wrapped these 37 inch BF Goodrich KM3s around them. I'm also running a 1.25 inch wheel spacer and if you've been following me on Instagram, I used to have Stealth Custom Series F5s and a 16 by 8 minus 25 millimeter. And that one had 3.5 inches of backspacing versus this one with 4.5 inches of backspacing. So this setup actually doesn't stick out as far as the old setup. 
which hopefully in the long term will be a little bit easier on wheel bearings and the rest of the suspension setup. For the suspension setup, I am running at about three inches of lift. It might look a little bit more than that just because I have the cut fender flares in the front and those are cut up about two inches. And the back will actually sit at about four to five inches of lift depending on how much weight I have in it. Right now, I am, there's no weight in it, so it's sitting at about like four. And I got this lift kit from Sonoran Steel. So this is the Radflow 2.0 coilovers and they have 600 pound springs on them. If I could redo it, I would probably go to the 2.5s and I would probably also get a 650 pound spring considering how much additional weight I have added onto the front end. And for the upper control arms, I am running a Uniball upper control arm from Camberg. And I haven't had any issues with this. Honestly, I haven't even been greasing it that much, but these never make noise. They've been silent the entire time. I am also running a one inch diff drop and that has helped to alleviate the CV axle angles a little bit. I'm only sitting at about two and a half or three inches of lift and that combined with the one inch diff drop, I really haven't had any problems with these CV boots leaking. The only ones that ever broke on me were the original ones that had over 200,000 miles on them. I also have not gusseted the spindles yet or the lower control arms. The lower control arms are just stock and in the future I will be doing those modifications. And I did replace the lower ball joints about two years ago and those have been just fine so far. And I guess we'll see how they hold up with the 37 inch tires. Underneath the vehicle, I have pretty much a full set of Savage skid plates. I picked these up from Wrench and Wheel Used. Unfortunately, that company went out of business and they made some great products. My only complaint with this is that it's actually really difficult to change the oil. If I want to change the oil, I have to take off this entire skid plate. It also takes out the bolt for the transfer case skid plate right there and then that starts to hang down. So honestly, every time I change the oil, it has been an absolute pain in the ass. If any of you guys plan on doing any sort of serious off-roading, I highly recommend getting a full set of skid plates as one of your first modifications. A while back, I was off-roading and I actually landed on this cross member here and I completely bent it, so I had to replace that one. And as you can see, it's still a little bent. I need to bend it back a bit more because that bolt right here is missing. The rock sliders on this vehicle are from Schrockworks. And these rock sliders are actually bolt on. So as you can see, they bolt on with one top bolt there and a bottom bolt. And they also have one over here, they bolt on with a top bolt there and a bottom bolt. And getting that, drilling this hole for the bolt up here was actually a huge pain because the angle required to get to that required me to drill at an angle and that was really tough to do. I think that most rock sliders on the market are weld on. So this is one of the few that were bolt on. I got this a long time ago before I really knew anything. And if I could do it again, I would probably go to a weld on rock slider and I could always just weld these ones, but I haven't gotten to that yet. I just haven't had a need for it. But they've taken some hits and honestly, these ones are really strong. I've also received a lot of questions on how I got these 37 inch tires to fit. And the simple answer is they don't. These do not fit yet. I did a tub for 35s. And this isn't anywhere near full lock right now, but when I do turn this to full lock, it's gonna start rubbing a lot. And eventually I'm going to have to come back and I am going to have to either relocate or cut the body mount back here. And I'm also going to have to cut this all back a lot farther. And if you're wondering how far back I have it cut currently for the 35s, if you look underneath your front fender, you'll see that there are normally two bolts. One of them is about right here, and I cut about right in between them. So normally the stock fender flares come out to about here. On the rear of the vehicle, I'm also going to have to do some tubbing. With these tires, it starts rubbing all along this. As you can see, there's quite a few rub marks there. And then this entire underside, those are all rub marks there. 
So I'm gonna cut that out and do a tub back here as well. And as you can see, it's rubbing down there too. So I'm probably gonna cut this back at least an inch all around, probably two inches up here. So that way I can get my full amount of up travel. On the rear of the car, I am still on the stock bumper. And I also have these tail lights. A lot of people have asked questions about these. I got these on eBay for about $150. If you just search up smoked LED tail lights on eBay, you'll find these. Companies like BXville also make really cool tail lights, but those are way out of my budget right now. And also I'm just afraid if I ever take it on a trail and I hit a rock with that tail light, then it's a lot of money out the door. And so now I'm gonna show you the interior of the vehicle. It's a little dirty. This carpet has seen better times. And on the inside, I just have two 10 inch subs on the back. So these were actually relatively cheap. This is probably on the cheaper end of brands you can get. I got these when I was really young. I was probably about 17 years old. Honestly, they're not exactly the best, but it's what I did at the time. I also have an air compressor in this back pocket. This air compressor is not for airing up tires. This one is solely made for powering or airing up your air lockers. And I cut a little bit of a hole back here so that way I can get the airlines to run through better. So the airlines for this air compressor actually come back through here and they run under this trim piece here and they come out they come out from the bumper up there and then as you can see I just ran them underneath above the frame right there and one of those goes to the rear diff I have an ARB locker in the rear and I also have an ARB locker in the front of the vehicle and this is where I have the switches for my ARB lockers mounted. So I have this switch for the air compressor and then the two switches for the front and rear diff. Obviously the car is not on right now, so they're not turning on. And I have a switch for a bumper light bar. And I also got this track off switch from Sean with Timmy the Toolman. And this thing has been awesome for any of you guys with a lifted vehicle that have the vehicle stability sensor going off constantly. This will fix your issues right here. Or you could just cut it off, cut the wire for it, and turn it off permanently. But I chose to install a switch for that. So yeah, I probably forgot to mention it earlier, but I am also running 5.29 gears. Some people have said that their air locker seals fail, but I've been running them for a while. I've probably used them 20 or 30 times over the past year and I haven't had any issues with them so far. For the rear suspension, this came with my Sonoran Steel lift kit. So those are, I believe, Land Cruiser seven and a half wrap coils along with the Tokiko black shocks. And they kind of ride a bit rough. So if you can get something better than that, I would recommend doing so. And it also came with this adjustable pan hard bar. And in the future, I'll probably want to install a Panhard correction kit from I'm Keith. And the kit also came with those extended bump stops over there. Some people have also asked to see my interior, but there's really, really nothing special about it. It's just a stock cloth interior. My clock does work though, which is nice. And unfortunately, my emergency switch button is pushed in there so that doesn't work anymore. I also have this Sony head unit, although it's a few years old, it's very slow. Some people have asked what head unit I have, although I'm not even gonna say what type it is just because it's really slow and I don't really recommend it. I also have these window rain guards here and I really like this type because this actually mounts under this trim piece here versus other brands that mount above it and are a lot bulkier. And I actually got these on Amazon, so I'll put a link for that down in the description below. All right, so that is it for the video. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to leave those in the comments and I'll try to get to those as soon as I can. And in the future, hopefully I'll be making a video on tubbing the firewall to get these 37 inch tires to fit. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. This is my first video and I'm just getting used to putting my face on camera. So hopefully you guys liked what you saw today. I'll be making a lot more cool content coming soon. So thanks for checking out the channel.